What's up, folks, and welcome back to another awesome episode of the Old Worn Outdoors Network. Here today, we're going to talk about firearms in America. So stay tuned, and we'll bring you a video. <laughs> saying that I'm not uh, very political. I believe in wrong and right and just and unjust. Uh, pretty, I'm not just all black and white, you know, there there is some gray in between, but I have no political agendas. I'm not political whatsoever, really, honestly. That being said, we're gonna talk about guns today. So I have here some facts. Um, Personal protection tops the list of reasons why gun owners say they own a firearm. That is fact number one. Right here, we're going to jump to number two. Around half of Americans, 48%, see gun violence as a very big problem in the country today. And to dive even further and break that down a little bit more, attitudes about Gun violence differ widely by race, ethnicity, party, and community type. About 8 in 10 black adults, 82%, say gun violence is a very big problem by far the largest share of any racial or ethnic group. By comparison, about 6 in 10 Hispanics, 58%, and 39% of white adults view gun violence this way. Now, obviously, without getting too political minorities view guns through many different scopes they see the uh they can be a problem they can be scary they can be uh protection tools the way i view them now understanding firearms plays a key factor in this role um and kind of to relate myself to this subject I can tell you various stories like for instance there was one time my brother and I we were very young I think I was about 12 he was maybe or I might have been around 13 14 he was a couple years younger and we were out squirrel hunting we had 22s at the time just walking around see a squirrel you know go ahead and harvest that animal well I had already taken a shot on one knocked him down went straight through the air knocked him down and I walked over to uh, go pick him up. And anyone who hunts knows that uh, the nerves and adrenaline and all that stuff, when you initially take a shot on an animal, they will, uh, if you go right up to them right then, they'll still be moving and stuff like that, but they won't be actually like alive in a sense. And that's what happened in this, this scenario. I bent over, grabbed the squirrel, went to throw it in the sack, turned around, and my brother was like, it's still moving. He's young, so he doesn't very he doesn't know very much. You know, he's still kind of green when it comes to that. Hadn't done too much hunting uh, at the time. And he had his rifle trained toward that squirrel, which I was holding in my hand. I was like, hey, bro, what are you doing? You know, put it down. He's done. I've already got him. Put him in the sack. No worries. That could be a scary scenario, you know, if you're not calm to where an inexperienced person or persons can potentially harm you. Take you for another instance. I was out shooting at a range once. Um, well, it's not really a quote unquote range, but it's where everybody goes to shoot. I've, you've seen previous videos here of um, on this channel of me shooting out there and everybody knows, you know, to respect others boundaries and stuff like that well my buddy and i were out shooting he had his family with him my wife was working at the time and we were shooting and we paused for about five minutes and we were just conversating and we start to hear ricochets and rounds 
going off. And anybody who's ever been to war or been shot at, essentially, like a police officer or something, you know what that sounds like. That cracking, popping close to your ear, making your ear ring and stuff like that. You know what that sounds and feels like. So immediately we tell his family, family, you know, get in the truck or get down, get behind the truck, whatever. We mound and move around from hard cover because there's some giant boulders out there. So we move around getting behind giant boulders. And then finally we go talk to this, this guy. And according to him, he has no idea that we're over here. I honestly don't even think he was knowing, he knows what he was using. He had a shotgun with slugs. I don't think he realized how far they can travel and the impact and things of that nature. So that's another way that guns can be scary if you don't know what you're doing or know what you have, you know what I mean? Know what you're working with. And my mother never really, in the beginning, from my youngest memories, I remember as a child when I was about five, six coming up, my mother never really cared for me to be around guns a lot, which was kind of impossible for me to avoid since I love hunting and fishing and stuff like that and outdoors so much. So I grew up the right way. I learned the correct way thanks to my uncles, my father, and all my family, stuff like that. I learned the correct way of how to handle firearms and stuff like that and through various sources like hunter safety classes, things like that. And that's the way I feel as... Americans, especially minorities, particularly, we can change the narrative as far as, oh, I don't want you to be around guns because they're dangerous or this or that. And yes, they can be dangerous, as I've previously explained to you, but they also can be awesome tools to provide meat and uh, to protect yourself and all kind of good stuff. Like, they're great, they're fun to shoot, and it's a great stress reliever, quite on if I'm being quite honest with you. And there's various ways, there's different steps, in my opinion, that we can uh, become better and kind of get rid of that negative nar negative narrative and that uh, stigmatism that guns are always a bad thing, especially for people of color, because they're not, in my opinion, quite frankly. They're awesome, and I am pro-gun and will always be pro-gun. But the ways we can do this is through education, through learning about firearms, as far as firearm classes, um, like firearm education classes, firearm, um, going to ranges, putting time in, dry firing, understanding um, the environmental factors on a firearm, you know, when you are shooting, whether that be like a long gun or some kind of other rifle, like an AR platform, or... Um, Learning laws, you know, learning your, your state's concealed carry laws or open carry laws or constitutional carry, you know, you got to learn all of these things. But not only that, learning about firearms in a dwelling, where, where should we store them? Where should we store our ammunition? What kind of ammunition do we need? Learning about reloaded ammunition and the safety factors to do with it. There's so many variables that I love and find interesting that we can deep dive into to help bring that comfort to make us feel safe and make us feel whole. Because once you have that training, honestly, you have way less worries. And another key thing is knowing the status of a firearm at all times. Even though, like, say I go to my buddies and he's he wants to show me his new gun, Regardless of if he said it's loaded or not, I'm going to treat it like it's loaded. That's the number one thumb rule when it comes to firearm use. You always treat them as if they're loaded. I know the status of all my firearms currently, like this one right here. This one is aircraft loaded, which means there's not a round in the chamber, but the magazine has ammunition. See? No round. Aircraft loaded. But... Another key thing about understanding firearms and being more comfortable with firearms is understanding what type of firearms you uh, are using or you're seeing firearm identification, so to, so to speak. For instance, this is a striker fire pistol. This is a Kennedy, and um, it, has, it doesn't have a safety per se. It has what is called a decock. Technically, yes, it does. It has a double trigger safety, but the decocker is the actual main safety. And what the decocker does is you push that button on the top 
and it'll drop the hammer inside the receiver. Now this uh, little red indicator will let you know the status of this firearm. Now the red dot here means hot, she's ready to go. That means the hammer is ready and primed, but you hit that decocker button and that hammer drops down and no matter what, you cannot fire this weapon. And also to perform maintenance on the weapon, you'll hit that decocker there and then hit your slide release, take your slide off and then boom, you can go ahead and take that spring out. You can go ahead and take the barrel loose. And then from there, you can perform your maintenance. Cleaning your slide, your barrel, or your spring, your lower receiver. And that's just part of, you know, being more comfortable with them. Taking them apart, challenging yourself essentially. Take, take the firearm apart and put it back together. And performing dry firing drills, things of that nature, just to become one and become in tune with that firearm. Whether that's a handgun or even say if it's a whole pump shotgun, you know, that's empty, chamber's clear, it's safe. But same instance, it's similar. This is one of the most purchased guns in the United States of America, an old pump shotgun because like I stated before, excuse me, most people you buy weapons for protection. Well, they they know and have it ingrained in their brain that this sound scares robbers away, intruders away, and that's always why this was one of the top rated firearms to be purchased. But yeah, essentially, that's that's the goal. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to bring forth. We're trying to bring more awareness, especially to the younger generation of safety, storage, uh, general firearm knowledge of dry firing, shooting on the range, of laws, all of this as a broad spectrum with one main goal and subject firearms bringing more awareness and understanding that we are not, you know, subject to believe that firearms are just such a bad thing and they're so horrible and all they do is take lives. Because I tell you that they can be great tools for stress relief, stress relief as well as great tools for providing food for your family out in the outdoors if you enjoy hunting like I do. So like always folks, we want to let y'all know that we appreciate you for watching this video so much. Um, it was a pleasure making this video for you. I hope you enjoyed it. You got something out of it. Um, and if you, you know, have any comments or questions, concerns, go ahead and leave us a comment down below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or any of our other videos as well, go ahead and like and subscribe, tell a friend, spread the word. We're trying to grow and spread the great news, the great messages of our experiences, our knowledge, etc. So like always, we'll leave all the links to our social media accounts um, down below as well as our email if you want to contact us and have any questions, suggestions, or anything of that nature. And we appreciate you for watching and we will see y'all next time. Thank you.